here we can see the three parts that make up the suspension of our hammock. We need two anchor points for our wall or ceiling, two suspension ropes, and two carabiners. We can install our suspension bolts into the ceiling or between two sturdy walls. After we have placed the bolts, we attach the suspension ropes to them. We can adjust the hammock to the correct height with the help of the ropes. You could tie the rope directly to the hammock or use a carabiner in between. What is the ideal way for the hammock to be hung in the end? No matter whether the hammock is suspended, indoors or outdoors, there are four basic rules for hanging a hammock, the only exception being the American-style hammocks. The good news is that we don't need to make any complex calculations to follow these rules. The first rule is to hang the hammock so that it approximately forms the shape of a banana or a sickle. In other words, the hammock should sag loosely. How far the hammock sags is determined by the so-called hammock angle. In the picture, we see how the angle is measured. The larger the angle, the more the hammock sags. The sagging of the hammock also affects what is the best lying position. Here, the hammock hangs like a banana at an angle of about 30 degrees. In this case, it is best to lie diagonally, like this woman. Hammocks can also be hung like swings, as demonstrated here, provided that they are wide enough. In this case, it would be best to lie crosswise in the hammock. The second rule is that the two ends of the hammock should be at the same height. If the two ends were at different heights, lying in the hammock would feel different. Ideally, the entire suspension system, including the bolts and ropes, should be symmetrical if possible. The third guideline is that the lowest point of the hammock should be approximately at knee height. This is the ideal height for sitting comfortably in the hammock and leaning back. An even more important consideration for suspending it at this height is safety. If something goes wrong with the suspension, the fall is not so dangerous. Another safety aspect to consider is ensuring that there are no objects beneath the hammock. The last rule is that the hammock needs enough space to swing. Of course, this is especially important if you have children, because as everyone knows, children love to swing in hammocks. Now, of course, the question arises, how and where we could hang the hammock in our apartment? Well, to say it right up front, we won't go into detail about how to use hammock stands here. Why? Stands require a significant amount of space, often cost more than the hammock itself, and generally do not complement the aesthetics of a home. Instead, we will focus on two other options. First, suspending the hammock from the ceiling. Second, hanging it between two load-bearing walls. Both options require you to drill holes, but as you will see, the process is not too difficult, and we will guide you through each step of the process. Before we get into drilling, let's talk a little about the pros and cons of wall mounting. Wall mounting is the classic way to hang a hammock at home. It actually works for any type of hammock. However, a drawback is that the hammock may obstruct accessibility in the room. Another drawback is that the wall suspension is often pretty conspicuous and may not aesthetically blend well with the surroundings. If your hammock is wide enough, such as the Hamakama Strong in this picture, then you should definitely consider the ceiling suspension option. In contrast to wall suspension, ceiling suspension does not impede accessibility in your space. With the hammock elegantly hanging from the ceiling, it becomes a stylish furniture piece, an ornament in the center of a room. An additional advantage is that the hammock sags more and thus takes up less space. However, there are two disadvantages associated with this method. Firstly, the hammock must be wide enough to allow for a crosswise lying position, which may require a more expensive hammock. The second drawback is that the hammock space is not fully utilized. It will be comfortable for only one person to lie in the hammock, limiting its capacity. Do I even have enough space for a hammock in my room? While there are methods to calculate this, we will show you a simple approach that eliminates the need for calculations altogether. However, to proceed with this method, you will need the help of two friends. The two friends will simply hold the hammock according to the four rules, ensuring that the hammock sags like a banana, the two ends of the hammock are at an equal height, the lowest point of the hammock is approximately at knee height and there must also be enough space to swing, ensure adequate distance from other furniture or objects in the room. 
By checking various spots in the room using the four rules, you can determine if the hammock fits. As long as the hammock is hung in accordance with these guidelines, there is enough space. Once you've found the right spot, just imagine a rope running in a straight line away from the hammock towards the wall. This would be the point where we would later drill the holes to attach the suspension bolts. And with the ceiling mounting, it is quite similar. In this case, we imagine that the rope extends the hammock until it meets the ceiling. Besides making sure there is enough space, it's important to check if the wall or ceiling is strong enough to support the weight of the hammock and the person in it. Let's look at the ceiling first. How do I know if my ceiling is strong enough to support a hammock? Here in Europe, the ceilings are often made of concrete, and this is actually the best material for hanging a hammock. The material is strong, and the installation is fairly simple. The main thing we have to make sure of is that we are drilling into the concrete and not into facing material. So when knocking the ceiling, it should not sound hollow. We also need to pay attention to the depth of the hole. For our suspension solution, for example, we need a hole with a depth of about 9 centimeters. This is not a problem for most ceilings. However, we should still make sure that the ceiling is thick enough so that we don't accidentally drill a hole into the neighbor's living room. What about mounting it on the wall? How do I know if my wall is capable of supporting a hammock? Here you need to distinguish between load-bearing walls and walls for decorative use. Decorative walls, like the one shown in the picture, are generally unsuitable for supporting a hammock since they primarily serve to separate rooms. So how do you know if your wall is load-bearing? You can seek assistance from your landlord or someone knowledgeable about the building who can identify which walls carry structural weight. A simple method to check the sturdiness of a wall is by tapping or knocking on it. If the sound it makes is hollow, it indicates that the wall is likely not strong enough to support a hammock. Another trick is to measure the thickness of the door frame. If the wall does not sound hollow and the frame is thicker than 12 centimeters, the wall is probably load-bearing. Now that we know our room is big enough and our wall or ceiling is load-bearing, where exactly do we need to drill the two holes? To find out the position of the holes without calculations, we first tie our rope to the hammock. We use a knot to form a loop. Then we connect the loop to the hammock suspension loops. Let's start by finding the right hole for our wall mounting. Here again, we need the help of our two friends to hold the hammock according to the four rules. The hammock sags nicely, both ends are at the same height, the lowest point is at knee height, and there's enough room to swing. Our suspension rope is a natural extension of the hammock. Now let's see where the rope meets the wall and mark the drilling point with a pencil. As a precautionary measure, make sure the bolt is not positioned too low, as this could result in the hammock hanging too close to the ground. It is better to aim for a higher position rather than a lower one. We suggest aiming for the top third of the wall, as this provides flexibility to adjust the hammock's position using the suspension ropes. Here we see the spot where we marked the first hole. The second hole should then be at the same height on the opposite side. When marking holes on walls, be aware of electrical wires or pipes. Stay away from electrical outlets, switches, and sinks, as there are always electrical wires or water pipes nearby. We recommend using a cable detector. This device will notify you if there are any steel or electrical wires present in the area where you intend to drill. A cable detector doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. A basic device costing around 20 euros should be sufficient. If you want to install your hammock on the ceiling, the process is similar. Once again, your friends should hold the hammock by the four rules. This time, we extend the ropes naturally in line with the suspension cords until we reach the ceiling. Then mark the hole for drilling. When marking the first hole, also consider the position of the second hole. Keep them spaced apart enough to prevent the hammock from bending too much, which can restrict the space inside the hammock. Another crucial factor to consider with concrete ceilings is that they are commonly made of reinforced concrete. This means that a mesh of steel wires is incorporated into the concrete for stability. While drilling into a concrete ceiling, you may encounter a steel wire. If you experience a sudden drop in drilling progress, do not continue drilling as masonry drills are not suitable for drilling through steel. 
Instead, simply try a second hole a few inches to the left or right and offset it at the top or bottom. The best way to avoid this problem is to use a cable detector before drilling, as they can also detect steel wires. By the way, if you have a white wall or ceiling, don't worry too much about drilling the wrong hole. You can quickly fix it with repair putty, and the holes will be almost invisible. Repair mortars are inexpensive and often even have an integrated spatula, so you don't even need additional tools to make the holes disappear. Now comes another crucial part. Which suspension accessories do I need? The answer will depend on the building material of your wall or ceiling. Our own product, the Hamakama screws, are suitable for a wide range of building materials. The first solution is meant for wood beams and studs. In this case, we only need the two ring bolts. Our ring screws are 10 millimeters in diameter. We prepare an electric drill with a seven millimeter wood drill bit. We use tape to mark a 60 millimeter drill depth on our wood drill. We have already determined and marked where to drill. Always prioritize safety when drilling by wearing gloves and protective glasses. Next, we'll drill the hole until we reach the depth indicated by the tape. To minimize dust and mess, use a vacuum cleaner next to the drill while drilling. Then we use a sturdy screwdriver to screw the bolt all the way in until you reach the shaft. Now we can proceed with attaching the ropes to the bolts. This solution is intended for use in concrete, such as this concrete ceiling. However, it also works in solid stones like solid bricks. Here we combine the eye bolts with high quality plastic plugs. If you are uncertain about the building material, conducting a small test drill can be helpful. The drilling dust can provide valuable information. For instance, red drilling dust typically indicates brick material, and fine white drilling dust indicates concrete. If the drilling progress varies, starting slow, then suddenly speeding up, and then slowing down again, it indicates a perforated stone material. Perforated stone refers to a type of stone that contains air chambers or voids within its structure. The plastic plugs would not be strong enough in this case. Instead, we would have to use injection mortar for mounting in this case. However, since our example deals with a concrete ceiling, plastic plugs are sufficient. We use an impact or hammer drill along with a 12 mm masonry drill bit. To ensure accurate drilling depth, you can mark the 87 mm drilling depth on the drill bit using tape. Here is an example of a suitable impact drill and an example of a suitable masonry drill bit. If you don't have an impact drill or hammer drill available, you can consider renting one from a hardware store or borrowing one from a friend or neighbor. Alternatively, investing in your own drill is a wise choice for your own toolbox. To make the tedious overhead drilling easier, it may be useful to pre-drill with a smaller drill bit and then use the 12 mm drill bit to widen the hole. Be sure to tie up long hair before drilling. Also, please wear work gloves and safety glasses. And when you get up on a ladder or chair, it would be good to get assistance so that someone can help stabilize it. Start by using the smaller drill bit. To minimize drill dust, hold a vacuum cleaner close to the hole so that it quickly captures the dust. We reached the needed depth and can now change to the 12 mm drill bit. For achieving neat hole edges, it's advisable to initially switch off the hammer mode of the drill. So we are now drilling the first few millimeters in rotary mode only. Then we turn on the hammer function of the driller to have faster drilling progress and continue drilling until we reach the marked drill depth. Afterwards, we clean out the hole with the vacuum cleaner. Now we take another quick look to make sure that the hole is really deep enough. The bolts should fit into the hole completely. Then gently tap the plug into the hole using a hammer. With a solid screwdriver, we can now screw in the screw all the way to the shaft. Now you can proceed to knot the hammock rope to the ring. A great advantage, especially for rented apartments, is that the screw can be easily unscrewed and the hole can be made nearly invisible by using repair mortar. The third solution using the Hamakama screws is ideal for weaker building materials, such as perforated bricks or aerated concrete. However, this variant also works for other building materials, such as concrete or solid bricks. 
In this case, the ring bolts are fixed with a so-called injection mortar. In addition, we supply anchor sleeves so that the mortar does not run completely into the air chambers of perforated bricks. You can think of this mortar as a superglue for stones. When it is pressed out, two chemical components are mixed and we effectively glue the screw into the borehole. In our example, we are using the mortar because we want to fix our screws to a wall made of perforated bricks, and a plastic plug would not be strong enough for this. We again use a 12 mm masonry drill. This time, however, we need a deeper hole of 95 mm, and we mark the drilling depth with tape. We should turn off the hammer function on our hammer drill to avoid damaging the fragile perforated stone. Next, we drill the hole until we reach the tape mark. It's crucial to use the bolt to test and determine if the hole is deep enough. The bolt should fit easily into the hole. In order for the resin to hold well, we need to clean out the drill hole thoroughly with a steel wire brush. Since our wall is made of perforated bricks and has air chambers, this type of borehole cleaning is sufficient. However, if you are using the injection mortar for solid materials such as solid brick or concrete, you will need to clean the hole even more thoroughly. This is absolutely necessary, otherwise the injection mortar will lose its load-bearing capacity. In such a case, in addition to brushing it with a brush, it is also necessary to blow out the borehole from the bottom. Using a vacuum cleaner would not be enough. This procedure should be repeated four times according to professional standards. In our case, because of the air chambers in the brick, we also have to insert an injection anchor sleeve. This sleeve prevents the mortar from being wasted in the air chambers. By the way, for concrete and solid brick, you should not use an anchor sleeve. We repeat the whole process for the second hole and ensure that both holes are well prepared before we start injecting the mortar. Now is the time to activate the two substances of the mortar by pressing out a 10 centimeter line on a piece of carton or similar. Make sure you wear gloves and don't let the mortar touch your skin. Now we can fill our first drill hole with the mortar. We start at the bottom of the hole and fill the hole with mortar to the end. By the way, if you use the mortar for solid brick or concrete, you should fill only two-thirds of the hole. Now we screw the bolt into the hole clockwise with pressure. At warm temperatures, we must remember that the mortar hardens more quickly, so we must work swiftly. Don't worry about oozing excess mortar, and please don't wipe it away in a liquid state. We will deal with this later. We will now repeat the same process for the second hole. Now we need to wait until the mortar in both holes is fully hardened, which typically takes approximately two hours. Finally, we can carefully remove the excess mortar. Optionally, you could also use repair putty for a more polished look. Now that our hanging bolts have been attached to the wall or ceiling, the final question is, how do I attach my hammock to them? If the ring bolts are positioned at the correct height, as shown in the picture, you can directly attach the hammock using two carabiners. In most cases, however, we recommend fixing the hammock with suspension ropes. This allows the hammock to be suspended flexibly, and the ropes also act as shock absorbers, making lying in the hammock even more comfortable. To do this, first make a loop in your rope, then attach the loop to the bolt like this. Now we have two options to either attach the hammock directly to the rope or use a carabiner in between. Tying your hammock directly is fast and useful if you take your hammocks to different spots, maybe even outdoors. The knot we recommend for this is the Beckett hitch, which we see here. With this knot, you can also easily vary the height of the hammock. This knot tightens under load. Alternatively, you can tie a carabiner between your rope and hammock. This is especially useful if the hammock is going to be hung in a fixed place. Here we use the clove hitch to attach the carabiner to the rope. Likewise, this knot can be adjusted easily and tightens under load. The advantage of the carabiner is not only that the suspension loops of the hammock are protected from wear, but also that the hammock can be set up and taken down quickly. Now we adjust the knots to ensure both ends of the hammock are at the same height, and the lowest point of the hammock is at knee height, which is about 50 centimeters. Regardless of the knot used, always test the hammock's stability by leaning on the center of it with your full weight. 
For our own product, the Hamakama Super Ropes, there is an alternative solution available. These ropes come pre-equipped with a carabiner on one side. In this scenario, you do not tie the rope to the hammock, but fix it directly to the suspension bolts. To do this, first attach the hammock to the carabiners. Then we lead the rope through the suspension bolt. After reaching the approximate height, we use a temporary knot to hold the hammock in position, and we do the same thing with the other bolt too. Now you can make the final adjustments to the ropes to ensure that the hammock hangs symmetrically. As we have determined the correct length of the ropes, we can proceed with the final knot, which is called the anchor bend. As a final optional step, you can trim the excess rope, leaving some clearance for future adjustments. We hope that this video has provided you with a comprehensive overview of how to hang a hammock at home. In our first example, we installed a Hamakama strong hammock to a concrete ceiling using the Hamakama screws with the Duo Power wall plugs. We connected the Hamakama super ropes to the bolts using the anchor bend. In the second example, we installed a Hamakama classic hammock on a perforated brick wall. In this case, it was done not with plastic plugs, but in combination with injection mortar, including anchor sleeves. In the video description, you will find links to the products and detailed instructions. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. We wish you many more relaxing hours in your indoor hammock.